Soon, very soon, God will enter our world, not with the crushing impact of unbearable glory, but instead will come in the way of weakness, vulnerability, and need. Incompetent and naked, a helpless God, full of a wild mercy who beckons us with all our vulnerabilities and weaknesses to get close to him. Manger, from the French manger, meaning to eat. An open box in which food for farm animals is placed. A place that is open, filled with nourishment and daily sustenance. God is vast, enormous, more than all the stars and brighter than the sun and the, softer than the moon and wider than the sky. God is no longer hidden, no longer unfindable. And while God is the greatest mystery, part of the mystery is that God became so simple and so obvious. In the warm cheek of a softly breathing baby, in the water and promises of love and belonging, in bread and wine that you and I can taste and touch and see and smell, and hold in our own two hands. That the everydayest things that you can imagine, the simplest meal, the simplest element, the simplest being, may nourish us with the mystery of beauty. God slips into skin, chooses to be in a body, a body that needs nourishment, needs rest, needs hugs and smiles, now God has soft baby skin. God learns to laugh. God learns to hunger and ask for help. Bodies aren't the things to leave and despise. In bodies, God teaches us and shows us how much we care for each other, how we depend on each other and feed each other and hunger for each other. We are losing our natural relationship to food. We worry, plan, count, obsess, restrict, punish, overindulge, compare. We don't know how to eat. We're told and sold a new diet plan every month. It is easy to overcomplicate our food and our faith. And yet within us is a hunger and a rhythm and a pattern of knowing that just wants to be heard, that we are so quick to turn down the volume. Our bodies, minds, souls what we know what we need and ask us to listen. We are excellent consumers. We will take, 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 consume, 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 more, 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 more. Food, media, work, technology, entertainment, bring it on. But do we know what it means to really hunger, to be filled and have enough? What changes when our goal is nourishment, not more? It's no secret. We need food to live. We need food to give us energy, give us life, give us strength to do all that we love to do. And we need to eat every day. You cannot possibly eat enough right now to never hunger again. Our faith is the same way. God nourishes us, sustains us over and over again, giving us energy, giving us life, giving us strength to do all that we love to do. And we need God every day. For our bodies, it is water and calories that are needed for life. For our souls, it is grace, inspiration, 
and hope that are needed for living. Our spirit is not so resilient as to be able to withstand long periods of fasting or neglect. There's an overabundance of junk food in our world. We are offered food-like substances. It's getting harder and harder to find good options and to make good choices, but it's so worth it to feed your family and feed your body well. There's an overabundance of junk spirituality in our world. We are offered spiritual-like substances. It's getting harder and harder to find good options and make good choices. But it's so worth it to feed your family and feed yourself well. What do you choose for nourishment? There is food for every occasion. Everything from a quick breakfast grabbed before work to a special dinner. From a community potluck to a traditional Christmas meal from a lonely midnight snack to coffee with friends. And God is no different, present in every moment, showing up in so many different ways, never leaving us alone, offering the nourishment that we are looking for. We bring meals to hurting friends. We could bring them flowers. We could bring them music or poetry. We could bring them movies and blankets but we bring meals and meals and meals. Because in the hard, lonely, sad, difficult times, we need nourishment and we can't do it for ourselves. We offer help with the everyday things that they may taste healing, comfort, and care. Have you ever noticed that our planet seems to love to grow food? While we have worked very hard to get more, faster, easier food from our planet, it still knows by its nature how to feed its people. The earth bursts forth in plant and fruit and grain. The melody of creation, the song she sings and celebrates, is nourishing those whom she hosts. Long before Jesus, manna fell from heaven. God's promises suddenly fit in your pocket and filled your belly. Repetitive, redundant, reliable, renewed promises, nourishing every morning. There is no doubt remaining. God sees you, God hears you, God feeds you. Jesus always sat at the wrong lunch table, the one with the awkward kids, the losers, the loners, the left outs. But Jesus didn't hold his nose and pretend to be a nice guy. No. Jesus sat with, ate with, laughed with, drank with people he truly enjoyed, relished, and loved. Jesus fed people a lot. He had some of his biggest miracles with food and some of his most intimate moments with food because everybody needs it. Everybody appreciates it. Everybody knows that meals are the rhythm of our days. Meals bring people together. Meals nourish our bodies and our need for connection. Meals pattern our life. And God makes it a habit to be there. Jesus had quite the reputation. It was joked that Jesus ate good food with bad people. Countless stories in his ministry involved meals, people coming together to share the simplest of moments, laughing together, joking together, passing the olive oil, and pouring another round of wine, all nourished by the food and the family formed around the table. The stories of Jesus feeding impossibly large crowds should not be forgotten or dismissed as some form of magic trick or sleight of hand. The obvious point of the story is that God desires that everyone have enough. God shows care for even our basic human needs like eating. We have serious problems in this world with millions of people not having enough, but we should never imagine that this is God's doing or God's desire. 
Heaven has often been described as a banquet. I don't know what things will be like after this life is over or what it was like before this life began. But there seems to be consensus around abundance, celebration, gathering, enjoyment, delight. And I can't think of anything that God would want more. Sometimes we're looking for extraordinary things to point to God's existence. Perhaps we should know by now that it is in the ordinary things that God comes to nourish us. This God who becomes the bread of life, born in this manger, becomes incompetent and naked, a helpless God, full of a wild mercy, who beckons us with all our vulnerabilities and weaknesses to get close to him. <laughs>